resume lacking some serious fluff? Do you want to get a job? Well, listen up to this crash course where we build our own security operations center by deploying our own SIM that monitors and generates alerts for all the devices in our personal home business lab. And we're going to set up a threat intelligence feed that sends our SIM commonly seen and newly found indicators of compromise. All for zero dollars and zero cents, sort of. Now, doesn't that sound like fun? We're going to set up our own playground to blow shit up. and see if our security team, which is us, gets notified that sh just blew up. This is your wake up call to finally put some sh on your resume. It's gonna make hiring managers go. This guy's amazing. All right, let's get started. Head on over to Azure, 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 where we're going to set up our free trial where we get $200. You heard that right, folks. $200 of credits to use towards anything that we wanna build. But if you know anything about Microsoft, then you know that's not gonna get you too far because of their subscription-based resource models. But there should be plenty for our mini sock environment. Click, clickety, clickety, clack. Gonna load my name, probably. You can't see it because I got mad filters going on. You're never gonna see my real identity. Uh, probably eventually, unless, unless someone has actually found me. If you sign in, you're gonna be prompted for all of your personal information. Don't worry, Microsoft has your social security number just like everyone else in the world. So put in all the things and your account's all set. You click the thing, it loads the thing. We don't need a tutorial because we have me. All right, so first things first, what do we want? We wanna set up our first virtual machine. So we create an Azure virtual machine. We like to go for the preset configuration Click through, you make up a, a new resource group. A resource group is just gonna be the container for all the things that we're gonna be creating. Let's call it Mad Hat Group, because we're, we're a cult at this point, right? Mad Hat's VM can be our virtual machine name. Let's leave it on the East Coast. Maybe I'm on the East Coast, maybe I'm not. You can leave the rest as default. And in our case, see, this is something that you can use to not only build out what we're gonna build out, but also you can have some hands-on experience with Windows Server, you can set up an AD, you can set up a hybrid environment, a uh, hybrid environment being that it's joined to the cloud. In this case, that would be Entra. You can have any Linux devices deployed as well, which we're gonna need for our threat intelligence feed that we're gonna be setting up. But for us, we're gonna select Windows Pro. Our username is gonna be Mad Hat himself. Password is gonna be something really easy to guess like Mad Hat Rock. So here's the most important part, because what we are going to be doing is monitoring the single most easily generated security event, RDP events. Because if you've ever deployed a virtual machine ever, well, you'll know that if you open up RDP to the rest of the world, it's very quick for you to get some immediate traffic to your open exposed RDP port. So we're gonna allow that. We go on to disks. This can really just be the default. This is just the total space you'd wanna have on there. For our purposes here, we're not gonna be installing anything gruesomely large. Networking, you wanna click through instead of going through review and create because it doesn't autofill unless you actually get to the tab. It'll auto create an IP address, a public IP, leave everything else default, network accelerating we don't need, we don't need load balancing, we're not we're not setting up servers, but you should. You can also set up Microsoft signing in with Entra ID, which if you want to expand on this mega project, which this is just the tip of the iceberg that I'm gonna be showing you, you can set up an entirely cloud-based, hybrid-based, anything your mind can think of, you can set up and practice how to set up in an actual live environment at a job. But for our purposes, we're just gonna click through, review and create, I didn't confirm. Whoopsie doozies, review and create. And now it tells us the price. You'll very quickly find out after you create all these, the price of these is just a little bit ridiculous. Although 20 cents an hour is, isn't terrible. This can take a little bit for it to load. But while that loads, you can see here in the notifications tab, It'll tell you when stuff's deployed, when it's submitted, and when it's successful, and if it fails. But, so this will take a little bit to spin up, and while we wait for that to spin up, because we need that to be spun up, we can finally deploy Sentinel. So what you're gonna wanna do is just search Sentinel. All you do is click the button, create Microsoft Sentinel. It literally guides you through the process of how to create the things you need to set up a sim. Point and click, this is, this is just, this is crazy, man. This is crazy. We add it to the resource group that's going to be, again, housing all of our resources, all of our VMs, all of our SIM tools, all of the things we deploy, servers, what have you. We're going to name it. Oh, we're going to use Dash. Good old Microsoft. All right, we'll use Dash. We'll make sure to set it to the same region. This is important when you have resources that are split because I think these set up in the region you set it up. So if you have a resource on the East Coast and it's trying to communicate on the other side of the planet in like Europe or something by accident, you might have some lag. All right, we review and create the log analytics workspace. As you can see, I didn't set up MFA because I like to live on the edge of my seat. Living, living in the dangerous lane, in the fast lane. The lane ha has all the pain, 
and rain and stuff. Okay, that's deploying. Our log analytics space is now up and running. Let's see if our VM's doing anything. Still being created. Okay. Let's refresh that bad boy. It's running. All right, just like that. Just like that. We got a, we got our own personal virtual machine, right? Look at that. It's crazy. And what we can do is we can connect to it via an RDP session if we want to. In this case, we're not really going to need to because we don't need to set up anything on the device. We don't need to install anything on the device. It's already publicly facing. If you go to the networks, network settings, you'll see that we have, oops, RDPs open on port 3389. So very quickly, you're going to notice I do have a different instance of this. So I've already ran this for a day and I've had like, I don't know if hundreds, maybe more of hits from, of course, Russia and North Korea. Could you not? <laughs> I'm not surprised. Once the VM and log analytics space are created, uh, we're going to want to select that, add Microsoft Sentinel to our log analytics workspace. There it is. Okay. Jesus Christ, Microsoft, you have a menu. This is where more or less if you click an overview, this is your GUI for your incidents, for the data, for your automation, all analytics. You can add a bunch of different thumbnails, thumbnails, a different, um, I don't know if they're called widgets or tiles in here that show you more information and you can customize it. Our Sentinel is spun up. We must go back to our log analytics space and we have to add the VM that we just created. We have to add its event logs and send it to our log analytics workspace, which is then going to send it to our Sentinel instance. If we go to agents, you'll see that we have zero computers connected. So all the while your VM is actively logging these events like any Windows computer would, we can't see those events. So we wanna get those events. We wanna pull them from the endpoint and we wanna send them to Sentinel. We have to set up what's called a data connector. And a data connector is just like it sounds. It connects data from the sources that you're trying to get it from. <laughs> We're gonna to wanna to click into the content hub which contains all the known established connectors. AMA, of course, is our Azure monitor agent, which is what we're using. We're just gonna wanna click install, which you can't see. You'll click it on the bottom here. That's gonna install for a hot minute, just like everything that we're doing. This takes time. Just take a little sippy sip of my not vodka. Ah, good stuff. Now you'll see we have a connector installed. We're done. No, we're not done. <laughs> so you'll go back to your data connectors. We wanna refresh. And so we are now shown two connectors because if you, if you read through that paragraph when we were installing it, it supports two different, I guess you can call it log ingestion or event ingestion. The legacy agent, which is going out of support, which we saw on a previous page, don't wanna be doing that. You wanna use the one that is now their new version. And from here, we wanna click into it. Can't see again, I'm gonna go over here now. I'm gonna live on the left side. Open connector page. We want to set up a data collection rule. So in this case, we're gonna call this to Windows events to Sentinel. <laughs> you can name it whatever you want. We're gonna hit resources, as in where we want to be pulling this. Select the Mad Hat VM. We'll wanna do all security events because we wanna see all of them and hit create. The data collection rule succeeds. We are done. You'll kinda just wanna go make a sandwich. I don't know, it's gonna take a minute, but what you'll soon see is now and here you'll see logs being collected. There's a couple different ways that you can create a Sentinel rule. But what we're interested in here is creating a rule that checks for successful sign-ins via RDP. So yeah, these are brute forces. What we're mostly concerned with is an account uh, was successfully able to sign in. So if we're looking for this field, the activity itself, this is a vague way of doing it. You can be more precise, but if you look at successful sign-ins, uh, you can see what accounts here. So these are all system accounts that are signing in. So if we want to generate an account or generate an alert that is not a system account, but rather we're more concerned with RDP connections, we don't want to see any system accounts, any system account logins. If we specify that, it's not going to see it. If we don't specify it, then we get all the sign-ins for the last 24 hours. We don't want to see system accounts. Confirm real quick that we don't create a new rule. Let's create a Sentinel rule. We're gonna name it something like successful local sign-ins. Set the severity to whatever you want to set it to. We're gonna set it to initial access because this is initial access on our computer for VRDP in this case. We're gonna hit next. Here you can test your query again to see if it works again. In our case, we already tested it in the log search. Set this up to, in our case, we want it to run every five minutes. More of a real-time detection. You can adjust this to however often you want to. We want it to set it automatically. So start running like now. And then alert threshold is how often it creates an alert. So after zero alerts, so after this happens one time, it should generate an alert. 
and then group all the events into a single alert. We'll hit next. So create incidents from alerts triggered by this analytics rule. And then once we hit review, create, we hit save, validations passed. And now if you go back to your analytics page, which is where all your rules live, now you'll see the newly created rule, successful logins, successful local sign-ins. If we click into it, you'll see over here on the right, it'll tell us everything we set up. This in theory should be running every five minutes. And after five minutes, if I sign in, which I did, it should trigger an alert. So if we go to our instance page, we'll see, oh, look at that guys. It created an incident. And in here we can go in and there you have it. Just like that. There's one incident right there. You see lots of events occurring. Those are security events that are being ingested into the SIM that we just deployed to monitor our VM, which we have exposed to RDP, which I should probably go turn, I should probably go turn that off. And just like that, you now have a project you can put on your resume that says you built yourself a SIM. Easy, right? Well, you get it. That's just the starting point. Again, it's the tip of the iceberg. You can build off of this. Hopefully I can create some more videos on the automation side of things. More specifically, the next part is going to be ingesting threat indicators, which by the way, Microsoft has already built in, but that's no fun. We wanna create our own threat intelligence feed, so to speak, via an API call and some other fun stuff. So stay tuned for that. Oh. Yeah.